I don't know where I am. I'm somewhere in between Joliet and Bloomington. And look at the size of the cup of water that they gave me. That is amazing. Now we're going to head off to uh, Springfield, Illinois. I think where I'm going is just about 200 miles from here. At some point, I'm gonna have to stop for lunch because I am hungry. But um, my meeting this morning, mercifully, and as I expected, uh, ended a little bit earlier. It didn't go the full two hours. So that gave me a little bit of a buffer uh, took care of a couple of extra odds and ends that I needed to do take care of before I left so now we're in good shape driving in the loop. It's one of my least favorite things. The downside with never being in the same car or with not owning a car is that um, you're always in something different. Um, different riding position, different drive styles, different car types. And so you're basically always uncomfortable whenever you get into a car. So that kind of sucks. But on the plus side, I don't have to own a car. So I had a hard time leaving this morning. I had to say goodbye to both the girls and to my wife. And um, my uh, oldest, Zoe, gave me you know, double hugs today as I left. And she asked me why I had to go to Springfield. And she told me that she, didn't, she wished that I didn't have to go. And I told her I agreed, so it was hard to leave her. Uh, you know, we're pretty much best friends, so. Uh, I'm gonna miss her over the next couple of days. I think she's gonna miss me too. So it's hard. She's old enough to understand that, you know, that I'm not there. She's not as easily distracted as, say, Grace is. And so um, that's harder. You know, it's gonna be hard to leave Grace for a week too. She's only four weeks old. So if leaving for a week, she's gonna come back a dramatically different baby than when I left. And so that's kind of hard and then you make makes you think about the choices and decisions that you make um, time for money the money for happiness and so you know the trade-off is is very tangible or palpable not tangible it's still I guess um, intangible as its emotions but the um, 
the trade-off here, the money for happy, um, is very palpable here. It's very apparent. And, um, and it's one of the reasons why I pick like, the kind of work that I do. It's just um, a lot of it, well, it, at least in the past, it has always been like very intense work periods, like high highs and low lows. And so when it was low, there wasn't much work to do and I could take off. And my wife used to be a 100% travel consultant. And so, you know, if I was slow and it was just her and I, and she was traveling somewhere for the week, I would just go with her. Or um, if I knew that I didn't, I could uh, be away from the office for a week, I would just go and, or for a weekend, I might, you know, instead of her coming home for the weekend, I would go out for the weekend. And so we did a lot of spontaneous travel that way. And to some extent, that kind of mentality sticks with us and that we don't really know how to plan a vacation. Um, so we like things that are spontaneous and last minute because we just don't like planning things because our schedules always change. And um, you know, the work that I do Uh, it allows for that kind of similar flexibility. So this summer, I wasn't that busy at all, and I was able to spend a lot of time with Zoe, kind of in like the honeymoon phase or the baby moon phase before Grace arrived. And that was really nice. And I get like pockets of time like that, where it goes from being really busy to being really slow, and I can take time to do more personal things. I mean, I, I have enough time to do the vlog. Why well, wouldn't I have enough time? I have time to put out a blog and so that I think is pretty cool and so I like kind of the work-life balance of this strikes that all being said you know running my own shop being a small business owner you know there really isn't ever a slow time I guess there are but there's always something that you should be doing and um, especially now that I'm thinking about starting up a channel, a YouTube channel for uh, the business that's gonna be uh, more frequent content. Um, you know, there's definitely gonna be even more demands on my time, and I also have two kids now, so that's, again, even more demands on my time. Um, but, you know, you're, trade you're constantly trading your time for your money and your money for your happiness, I think. Um, and so, long story short, a long time ago, I uh, kind of turned down the traditional legal route and uh, I went down this road that I'm on now. And it's not for everyone. Um, not everyone can afford to have the uncertainty of being a small business owner. Not everyone can afford the uncertainty of the cyclical nature, the cyclical nature of the way the revenue comes in, um, if it's gonna come in. And so there's a lot of things like that that make it not for most people. Um, but it is for me and my, my family. So we like it. Um, and, you know, as much as there are times where it's tough and I got to leave for a week, again, it's not that frequent. And uh, when it happens, it's not for that long. So all in all, it comes with the territory. And, you know, it stinks now, but... In the big scheme of things, it's not so bad. How would I get for you? All right, I have a filet, a large fry, a large lager, and a small coffee. That's perfect. 717 at the first one, please. Right. Thank you. Tell me what you see. I've definitely forgotten just how boring this drive is.